Today in Australia, it's basically the beginning of winter. You know, we are in this transition between summer and winter. So the temperature were very high a few months ago. And now we are going through the cold days. And the temperature of the water in my aquaponic setups here is dropping dramatically. My fish are becoming less active and some of them developed some fungus. And that's what we're going to see today in this video. We're going to see how to save your fish, how to basically take care of your fish if they get some fungus. So you know that the activity of the fish, the metabolism activity of the fish is completely dependent on the water because they are what we call cold blood animal. So the, the blood of the, uh, of, the, of the fish is going to be dependent on the temperature of the water. So in winter, when the temperature is low, the blood of the fish is low as well in terms of temperature and therefore all the activity inside his body, you know, all the bacteria that are going to digest, all the enzymes that are going to digest the food, they are not going to be active. So the fish are not eating much in winter. So it depends on the species, you know, every species of fish has got a specific range of temperature. But when you go in the bottom of the range, the fish are becoming less active and therefore they don't eat much or sometimes they just stop eating it completely. So during winter, they just live on their reserves. And that's very important to understand. It means that if your fish are stressed, they're gonna use all their reserves and then they're gonna, they are not gonna have enough energy to go through winter. So it's very important to avoid any stress for the fish during winter and to keep, to maintain the reserve of the fish, the energy of the fish at the highest level. So decrease the stress Try to maintain the temperature as high as possible if you can. So most of the time in aquaponics, we don't have a lot of chances to increase the temperature of the water. But if you have a small setup, you can insulate the setup or you can even sometimes use a little fish heater, aquarium fish heater, you know, um, that you put in your setup and uh, just to maintain the water at 12 degrees during winter, you know, depending on the species you have, but just to make sure that you are just above the minimum range of the fish in terms of temperature. So here uh, in Australia, in Melbourne, I got some silver perch in my setups. And silver perch, they are native fish. In winter, they just go in the bottom of the rivers, in the bottom of the dams, and they just wait for summer to come back. So they just stay and remain uh, alive thanks to the reserve they have. In aquaponics, the fish are kept in very small fish tanks. So just make sure you don't stress them because if you got kids around or people around that are opening the fish tank, disturbing the fish, the fish are going to be stressed. They're going to try to find a way to go away. There is no way for, for them to go away because they are in a fish tank. So they're going to use a lot of energy. You know, they're going to be stressed. Their heartbeat is going to increase. They're going to use all the energy they have and then they become very weak. So if there is any disease like fungus, bacteria or virus that is coming, so you know that in winter we don't have so many bacteria, but we have a lot of fungus on the fish. So the fungus is a type of um, mushroom that is growing on the surface of the fish, on the skin of the fish. So you can really see it. You can, it's very easy to identify. When you see a bit of white mold on the top of the fish, that's fungus. And that's where you need to act. So today I want to give you um, two advice. Well, three. The first one was to try to maintain the temperature at a good range, but very hard to, to do if you are uh, doing aquaponics outside, if your setup is not well insulated. If it's the case, yes, you can put a little aquarium heater. Don't, don't raise it because you want to stay sustainable. So try to consume the lowest quantity of power possible, but just try to maintain the, the water temperature above 12 degrees. But then, the other, the other thing is, you know that in water there is this uh, reaction called osmosis. So osmosis is uh, basically uh, uh, an ability that has got the water to always go from the less concentrated to the more concentrated solution. So just to explain you, in water here in a fish tank, you got some fresh water, you got some fish. The fresh water has a very low quantity of sodium inside. If you don't add any, any salt in your aquaponic setup, there, is, there are very few salts available into the water. While inside the body of the fish, it's very high in sodium. There are a lot of minerals, a lot of salts inside the body of the fish. So the water is always trying to go from 
uh, from the fish tank to the inside of the body of the fish. So the fish always have to regulate this osmosis and therefore it consumes some energy to do that. So the solution is to add a little bit of salt into your water. So we are still in fresh water, right? Uh, fresh water is normally zero grams of salt per liter of water, while in salt water we are around 35 grams of salt per liter of water. You know, when we talk about the sea, the ocean, they are around 35. So here what we're going to do, we're going to try to put our setup at three grams of salt per liter of water, which is less than 10 times less uh, what we got into the sea, but it's going to be enough to help uh, our fish because what you what you need to understand is that the osmosis power is going to be dependent on the variation of uh, concentration between the salt that you have into your fish tank and the salt you have into your fish. And the higher this, this difference is and the higher the power of the osmosis is going to be. But if you if you increase this by 3 grams, it's going to decrease the power of the osmosis significantly and therefore the fish are going to be way more relaxed. So why don't we put 35 grams per liter? It's simply because first the fish, some fish uh, are not going to survive to this uh, quantity of salt. But the problem is especially for the vegetables. You know the vegetables they are sensitive to salt. If you have too much salt they, they are not going to grow and they may die. So the limit that I'm going to fix is uh, basically the strawberries. They are very sensitive and the limit is 5 grams of salt per liter of water. So we're going to remain way below and we're going to use only 3 grams of salt per liter of water. It's perfect for the fish, perfect for the plant, no problem. And it's going to decrease the osmosis power. In order to do that, we're going to use some classic salt. So here I got some salt that is used normally for swimming pool. So as you see, this type of salt, uh, I buy something like 20 kilo, 20 kilo bags. Uh, for something like six dollars so it's very very cheap uh, just make sure that you use a salt that hasn't been treated with chemicals you want a salt that is natural you know a salt from the sea so sea salt but don't buy it in the shop like for human consumption because it's too expensive this one you know you buy 20 kilo for six dollars so it's very very cheap uh, and it's perfect for the job three kilo of salt per thousand liters of water that you have in your uh, fish in your aquaponics setup so uh, if you got 1000 liters of water, put 3 kilo. If you have only 500 liters, you put only 1.5 kilo and whatever the volume is, you do the conversion. So now this is going to help, right? And also it's going to help to keep the fungus away because the fungus don't like salt. But if your fish are already infected with fungus, what we're going to do, we're going to fish the fish and we're going to put them in a bucket of water. And in this water, we're going to add some salt. We're going to add 10 grams of salt per liter of water. In this bucket, I'm going to put 50 liters of water. And I, I know that I want to have uh, 10 grams per liter of water, which means that I'm going to put 500 grams of salt inside this bucket. So I'm going to add the salt. In this case, that's what we call a salt bath. We're going to give a salt bath to our fish for an hour. We're going to add a nest stone inside the bucket and we're going to make sure that the fish are going to remain in good condition. So we keep an eye on the fish. We want to make sure that they are still OK. You know, it's not going to affect them. We want to basically treat all the fungus. We want to make sure we remove all the fungus, but we want to make sure the fish are not going to die. So you need to keep an eye on the fish because they're going to be stressed again. A lot of fish, high concentration of salt. So you need to make sure that you got enough oxygen and you may need to, to keep an eye on them. So then if you can keep them for an hour into this, this uh, bath, it's perfect. But just keep an eye on them and see, you know, if you see that after 30 minutes they start to struggle, just stop it. And then you can renew it, you know, you can do it once, twice, three times. And every time, you know, you should reduce uh, the population of fungus on your fish. When you do that, just be very careful to not remove the slim from the skin of your fish. So use a net that is uh, fish friendly, not a net that is rough, not a net that is a tissue that is going to remove all the slim, right? You want the net the smoother possible. 
So while the fish are into the salt bath, that's a really good time to observe the fish. If you see some fish with a lot of, of fungus and some fish that are just turning, you know, they are just struggling to, to stay alive. And if it has nothing to do with the oxygen, just put those fish aside and keep them away from your fish tank, basically. If you have another tank, put them in another tank. But those fish are probably going to die anyway. So if you leave them in your fish tank, they're going to be a source of fungus for the other fish. So just put them away from the fish tank and try to, try to take care of them. Uh, if you can, give them another soil bath more frequently. Uh, try to increase the concentration of salt depending on the species. Some fish such as tilapia or barramundi can live both in fresh and salt water. So you can go up to 35 grams of salt per liter, even, even over that. But for most of freshwater fish, 10 grams per liter is a good concentration. So just stay to this concentration of salt and uh, just uh, continue to dip your fish into the salt bath and hopefully it's going to fix the issue. But you know, it's better to remove the few fish that are already uh, almost dying uh, than trying to keep them and I mean all your fish that are contaminated. So when you have fish that are very sick, normally you need to take them away and put them in a special tank where basically you try to save them. But don't keep them in the same tank as the others. So I imagine that this uh, video uh, is going to be very useful for some of you. I hope your fish are not going to fall sick. But you know, it's very usual to basically have some fish that get weak and develop fungus. So it's not something exceptional. You need to be prepared to this thing because it may happen in your aquaponic setup. So just by watching this video, I think the step is very simple. You know, you fish your fish. You put them in a salt bath uh, at 10, gra 10 grams of salt per liter of water and it's going to remove a lot of fungus from your fish. And obviously you put your fish back because it's going to stress them. And in a week time, if it doesn't go better, you can continue it. You can do it again and again and again. So by doing so, you really decrease the, the concentration or the quantity of fungus that are present on your fish. Uh, the problem is if you do it too often, you stress them all the time. So the reserve uh, decrease as well. So in aquaculture we use a lot of other uh, chemicals to get rid of the fungus and one of them is the potassium permanganate. So potassium permanganate is very efficient to get rid of fungus but it's a very toxic chemical so I don't want to advise you to use those types of things. You know normally in aquaponics we should be able to, to work without any chemical and uh, without any specific minerals that are very aggressive for the fish. So try to stay away from that. If you really can't uh, get rid of it with the salt, you can use uh, methylene blue. But again, that's normally very much used in ornamental fish, you know, in your aquarium. In a fish pond, I prefer to stay away from those products. Uh, if, you just, if you can just go do some salt bath without any other thing, it's much better. Don't forget that uh, if you need more information about aquaponics or if you want to know how to build your own aquaponics setup in the best conditions, I offer you a guide, a six steps guide to help you to build and manage your aquaponics setup in the best conditions. So uh, the guide uh, is available from the description of this video just below if you are watching this video on YouTube uh, or uh, in the link somewhere on the Facebook. Also, uh, there is an eye like information in the corner of this video and you can click on the eye and you will find also uh, the six step guide to build your own aquaponic setup. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you can subscribe to it. It's a channel where I share a lot of uh, free information uh, to manage your aquaponic setup in the best condition and to keep your fish uh, in, um, in good health and your vegetables to grow some fantastic food at home. So basically to produce the food where it's going to be consumed and to do it in a sustainable way. So subscribe to the channel and also I will ask you if you think this video was helpful for you and you think it's going to be helpful for others, please give a, a like to the video uh, because when you give a like to a video it simply increases the likelihood of YouTube spreading the video. So basically when you, when you give a like, it helps me to rank and basically the video is going to be seen by more people. See you in the next video. Bye bye.
Don't forget to get your free gift from this screen. You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon and I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop!